I've said this is unpatriotic, this is un-American. Mayor, Our point, right of, to point of order, Mayor, uh, point of order, please. Point of order, I, I point of order, right. Mayor. I'm the I, mayor here. Sir. I know you're the mayor. Stand, stand by. Listen, stand, I'm stand myself. Stand down, Mayor, mayor I'm, point of order. I'm myself. Point of order, Mayor. That's who I represent. I represent this banner. I mayor, represent I, this banner. Councilman Foster, you're out of order. No, Mayor, so, you're out of order. Point of order. We have a protocol how we Count, conducted Councilman this. Foster. We have a protocol have, how we do you're out of order, sir. You're Either, out of order. Sir. Listen, Councilman so you, Foster. You're going out of the protocol. Uh, I'm Foster. asking you to stay with the protocol I, and allow Councilman these people Foster. to continue. They are, they are speaking. They are speaking. No, you're speaking, no. sir. You're no. speaking. Mayor, no. Let him talk. Speaking. Councilman Foster. You're speaking, Mayor. I am speaking. I, I, I run this meeting, sir. That's why sir, the people we, elected me mayor. Sir, but we have a, we have a point of order. We have a protocol. And my comments about being unpatriotic, un-American, with all due respect to each and every one of you, they still stand. When I say, when I say you could gift wrap it, put a bow tie on it, put a bow on it, I mean it. I'd like to call the uh, regular council meeting 2021-18 to order. Our invocation will be led by none other than Bishop Merton Clark from Truth Reveal Ministries, Trim Nation as they call it. And the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Councilman Bailey. But before, before we begin with the speakers, just want to cover a little bit about civility as you come before us to speak. Please draw your attention and your speech towards me. Please keep your comments towards me. Do not make any personal attacks to anyone on this dais. Uh, if you want to mention someone's name, you're free to speak and say, uh, you know, contain that, but please direct it towards me. Uh, before we go to the speaker cards, I, I just want to say uh, this is our first term. There's three council members up here. This is our first term. And, and I am, I am honored of the response by our community. I've never seen that many speaker cards. Uh, this is, in my terms, this is gun ho for you being here. This is serious for you, and and I just want to take this opportunity to stand up and salute you. Mr. The members of this committee, this just doesn't smell right. What are you really trying to do? What are you trying to hide from the citizens? I, for one, will not allow you to pack this city council with your pals and your cronies. This is our city, not yours. Rob Medina says he supports a forensic audit to closely examine City Hall. He also supports creation of a citizen committee to oversee City Hall. I just witnessed my grandson's Little League baseball game, and I swear there's more oversight on that baseball field than that Little League game that there is within our city. Another reason cited precedent other municipalities perhaps have filled seats in this manner. My response to this is shame on the people who allowed it to happen because precedent is a poor excuse for the people to allow bureaucrats to determine their destiny. It can end right here and right now that we the people voted for you to be in to ask yourselves how would you feel knowing that I won't have a say on who makes choices for my children's community that they so love. This proposed ordinance is un-American, and it offends the spirit of this great nation. Thank you. We find ourselves here due to Mr. Bailey's announcement of a resignation, which he has not officially submitted to, the, to my last check. However, this member who has been investigated by the FDLE because of his taking money for his campaign from Mr. Aguilar and never reporting it and also purchasing prescription drugs has admitted addiction from a place uh, known for its prostitution and other legal action should not have even 
ran for office, in my opinion. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm a child of the Most High God. I'm a person under royal providential leadership and empowerment. I am the earthly daughter of a United States Marine, the wife of a United States Navy man, and who also served in the United States Air Force. I am a Constitution coach serving the city of Palm Bay, County of Brevard, State of Florida, within the United States of America. The preamble of the city charter of Palm Bay, Florida starts with we, the citizens of this city, not we, the city council of this city. The city charter, the city charter of Palm Bay, Florida, section 3.02, city council composition. There shall be a five member council consisting of a mayor and four other members who shall be the electors of the city, not appointed by the council. If this amendment is allowed to proceed, we the people who voted Councilman Bailey to his seat to be our representative on the city council will not have the opportunity to choose his replacement and our voices will be silenced and our votes lost. I am one of those people who do not want my voice silenced. I voted for Councilman Bailey and trusted his judgment to serve honestly and he has done so. Unfortunately, I do not feel the remaining council members do not share the same values as the majority of the citizens of Palm Bay. Amending this ordinance now to allow the remaining city council members to appoint a successor is suspect and wrong. Where is the process for appointing a council member? How long does the process take? How much would that cost? How would someone be considered for the appointment? Where is the playbook appointing council members? We, the people, must select our own successor to the vacancy. Vote no to any changes to Thank this you. ordinance. Thank you. Taylor Goolsby, followed by Margaret Goolsby, and followed by Richard Goolsby. Good evening, council members and Mayor Medina. Thank you for letting me speak. I may be an un. un an inexperienced 18 year old who just turned 18 this year but I find it not justful to take away our right of speech my entire life my entire family and anything that I've seen in the entire world told me to stand up for what I believe in and if I am being told that my voice is being suppressed by people that we elected then I don't think that that is the correct thing to show the younger people of this generation and generations to come that we are not able to use our voices that we have been given by the only person who has given anybody a voice, our holy God, who is the divine creator, who let us have a voice. I just want to say, Ms. Goolsby, as an 18-year-old, you showed so much courage, Ms. Goolsby, standing up here and speaking your I commend you for coming up here. And that's my granddaughter. <laughs> this council was not voted in to relieve us of our constitutional right to choose who represents us. How did you get here? The mayor did not appoint you. Each one of you were chosen by we the people of Palm Bay by a vote. If one of those positions was filled by the panel picking someone, that would end up as a good old boy election and every one of you would be related in some form or another. That's what makes this country the beacon of light on the hill for every oppressed nation around the world and its people. It's why the people in Cuba are in the streets against communism. It is why the people in Miami are standing for the people in Cuba screaming libertad. Number one, never give up your right to vote. Yeah. Item two, other cities have similar ordinances, then you should probably move to that city if you think you should change it for us. I like the ability to vote for my representatives. That means that I am now a part of the playing party. 
Uh, I'm Xiao Qi Wang. I'm an immigrant from China. Citizens are not allowed to vote in China, and all the government officials are appointed um, to make sure that the ruling party stays in power forever. Doing, a, doing away with the special election is an invitation to turn the nonpartisan democracy, de democratic process into rule by an, an elected partisan mob. Is, although I'm a Melbourne resident, I c don't consider this to just be a Palm Bay issue. Amen. I consider this to be a national issue. Yes. Uh, recalls come to mind. Okay. Yeah. Mess with the, uh, the tiger, you get the tail. Or you get the tail, you get the tiger, right? Right. So uh, I'd be a man on a mission, man on fire, because my right to vote is priceless. You guys replaced the administration um, that is probably going to be remembered as one of the most corrupt, dishonest, lying administrations that sat up on this dais in a long time. You guys can be better than that. You guys have that choice right now. So I, too, am not a Palm Bay resident, but I'm here for two reasons. One, I go to the house church, which is located in Palm Bay, and my pastors are out of town, and they asked everyone in the church to go, <laughs> to come tonight, because they couldn't be here. So that was one, that's one reason. And in that, I'm learning everything that our nation was founded on is biblical. It, it goes back to the Old Testament. It's a Judeo-Christian nation, and, and God, gave, God asked us to elect representatives. And I believe and I know that our nation is founded on that basis. This is Jackie Baudick. I wanted to touch a little bit on what Mr. Lawrence says. He said he will pick up his share of the cost. Listen, that cost has been paid by our founding fathers. This reminds me of when I was an NCO in the Army, and often I would have to say, you know, every time I come here, it's because there's a problem that needs to be addressed. Why is that? These people, and I have been here with you, Council. Me and Mr. Batten and a handful of other citizens have been here with you for months at the Council meetings with empty seats so that things like this didn't occur. And I frankly am appalled that it got on the agenda. I don't know how it did, but I'm not going to question anybody's motives. And I know I'm short on time, but I will say, I will not cast shade on anybody's character on this dais. I will only shine light on Thank this you. situation. Thank you. Do the right thing under the light, gentlemen. Council, I just wanted to take a pause here for a second and, and just, you know, there's so many things that have been addressed so far. Um, I can tell you that I, I don't believe this should have been on the agenda. I can tell you. We, we, we have an opportunity here, uh, and like I said before, I publicly have said this. I've said this is unpatriotic, this is un-American. Mayor, point, right of, to point of order, Mayor, uh, point of order, please. Point of order, I, I point of order, right. Mayor. I'm the I, mayor here. Sir. I know you're the mayor. Stand, stand by. Listen, stand, I'm wrapping myself. Stand down, Mayor. mayor I'm, point I'm of order. Thank you. Point of order, Mayor. That's who I represent. I represent the banner. I Mayor, represent uh, this banner. Councilman Foster, you're out of order. No, Mayor, so, you're out of order. Point of order. We have a protocol how we Count, conducted Councilman this. Foster. We have a protocol have, how we You're out of order, meeting, sir. You're out of order. Listen, Councilman so you, Foster. You're going out of the protocol. Uh, I'm asking Foster. you to stay with the protocol I, and allow Councilman these people Foster. to continue. They are, they are speaking. They are speaking. No, you're speaking, no. sir. You're no. speaking. Mayor, no. Let him talk. Speaking. Councilman Foster. You're speaking, Mayor. I am speaking. I, I, I run this meeting, sir. 
That's why the people we, elected me mayor. Sir, but we have a, we have a point of order. We have a protocol. We have a protocol, and Sir, we have to go by the protocol. Listen, I'm, and you I'm, have I'm violated that. myself with the flag of the United States of America. Carry on, Deputy Mayor Johnson. Marco Strand. So yes, you have that right, but your responsibility is to the rights of the people. I believe, save from a catastrophe or some kind of emergency, appointments should never be for elected positions. It undermines the position, it undermines the people's trust, and it undermines their voice. But their voices are what matters the most. So I think that the ordinance should be changed. I don't think there should ever be an appointment to an elected position, whether it's from the state on down to the municipalities. The ordinance should be changed to allow for a special election at all times, no matter what. Thank you. My question is, what savings would be realized by changing the resignation date? Because that has been put out there. You also have a media outlet, correct? Yes. Information's been put out there. What's that based on? It, my, my understanding, the, saving, the savings that would be associated with the cost of the election from happening on November 2nd, which is what the regular general scheduled election is for Brevard County, that Palm Bay would have to put on the election by itself, independent from the general election. So obviously, if, they are, if, if our election is consolidated with the rest of the county, there's going to be some cost savings there with labor, with overtime. I think the, the supervisor put out an estimate that was itemized by the extra overtime charges and temporary staff. So what, just can, let me just get, I know, I mean, I apologize for sure. cutting you off, but what is that cost then? What's that cost difference? I believe it's approximately $96,000. So you're saying that basically it's, a, it's your own speculation based on reading what they have there, right? You don't have anything from supervisor election saying that would save $96,000, correct? In writing, no. I don't, all I can say is that okay. from the supervisor election's office, it is the general belief that if the elections are consolidated together, it is going to be a lesser cost because you have a pool of people to pull from to put to different polling stations as opposed to a temporary staff only for a Palm Bay election. Place. My, my question to you, and obviously I, I understand the, not the back and forth dialogue, but hopefully you'll take this up after, um, after your speakers have finished talking, is number one, where did this suggestion come from on the agenda? I know staff has taken ownership of it. Um, the Constitution officers have taken ownership of this. But I have a hard time believing that your staff, who all work for you, by the way, would put this on the agenda without at least one council member, without, without at least one council member suggesting the change. And, and if they did do it on their own, then you've got far bigger issues. Because I, I, I know these constitutional, I had the, the honored to work with all three of these fine individuals, and I don't think that they would initiate this on their own. Because, because of this, you know, they've put you all in the crosshairs by doing this, because I know obviously, it's obvious that some support it and some do not. Um, I would just ask, you know, if this was important enough of a change and it's all about cost savings, why now? Why now with the resignation of a council member would you change this at this hour? So take, so take the responsibility whether you like this or whether you don't. But I knew there was a lot of passion in Palm Bay, but boy do I love Palm Bay. <laughs> God, God bless you guys. Um, and so I think it's the wrong time to do it. I don't think it should be done at all, but it certainly would be the wrong time to do it for the election. So I'm going to say a rosary for you guys tonight. I'm going to assume... And like I said, I must have gotten 80 phone calls. That's why I came down here tonight as chairman of the Brevard Republican Party to kind of give you guys a little bit of food for thought because I think that if you make the wrong decision, you guys are going to be sitting here and some of these people are going to be sitting up there. So we, we want you to do some food for thought, do the right thing, and do not change this ordinance the way it's being proposed. That the seat being vacated by Mr. Bailey, was, he was elected by the... People. It belongs to the people, just like all of your seats. They're the people's seats. So the people should get to decide who sits up there, not council. Considering all, any alternative, regardless of the cost, that, that price was paid. You know, I often think about the price that was paid. Many people say the founding fathers paid that price. And I agree. They use biblical principles, as it was mentioned. Could you imagine, Council, had our founding fathers thought about the price then? We'd all be saying, hail the queen. We wouldn't be 
the United States of America. We are Americans. We clothe ourselves with the flag. We're patriots. And this proposed ordinance, in my opinion, counsel, is unpatriotic and it's un-American. Councilman Fawson. Um, this, let, me, let me start out by this, saying this. Um, I served over 28 years in the federal government, U.S. military, Department of Justice. I have a business here, Foster Experts, that I fight for people's civil rights, constitutional rights. And I understand about the Constitution. Okay? And I believe everybody has the right to vote. My ancestors wasn't given that right. My great great grandmother was a slave. She didn't have the right to vote. The founding fathers didn't give her the right to vote. She had to fight for the right to vote. Okay? So, can I? Speak, please. Um, please, no, no outbursts. I, I didn't, I didn't say nothing when you were speaking. So I'm, it's my time. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to be quick uh, at the time. So I'm all for the right to vote. This is a situation, the way I see it. I'm, I might disagree with you on how you feel at this moment. I appreciate you coming out and, and expressing and hearing you. I think you got a right to be heard. And you also have the right to vote. This seat being vacated by Councilman Bailey. You elected him, Palm Bay elected him to serve out four terms. He's not doing that. He's not fulfilling his, his term. Same, you elected me. I knew I had to serve four terms. Okay? And I'm not... Um, saying something bad about Jeff Bailey. Uh, he makes his decision. He had to make a decision. And then you will make a decision who fills that seat in 2022. You'll make that decision in August of 2022. We're going to have a primary. We're going to have a general election. We got to pay for that, both of them, election. Okay? So no one is taking your right to make that decision in 2022, okay? Please, please, uh, just stand by uh, one second, Councilman Foster. Please, no outburst. I Council is now speaking, no outburst. Thank you, Mayor. Carry on. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so no one is taking that decision. It's on the supervisor election that this seat is going to be up for, uh, for uh, election. Okay, and as it's, we speak right now, no one has applied for this seat. If you go on the supervisor election, no one has stepped up and said, I want to be in seat five next year. Not one person. Not one person. And this job, you know, when I ran, I thought it was easy, but it's not. It's a tough job, and you got to make tough decisions. Here's why... I disagree with you guys, and that's my right to disagree, but I'm for you as far as you getting the right to vote. Okay, that might sound confusion, but I really am for you to get the right to vote, because based on my ancestor, I don't want no one voting rights to be taken away. I fought for this country for freedom. I spent, I'm a combat veteran. I got over 20 years in the Department of Justice, law enforcement, enforcing laws in this country, voting laws. As a U.S. Marshal, I've done all of that. Okay? And I, I hear you. I, all this week, I took many a phone call, well, excuse me, yeah, many a phone calls and a lot of emails, and I read every one of them. Every email I read. And some wasn't so nice to me. And some made statements that I never even made. This is the first time I'm making a statement about this in public. I didn't do it. I didn't go to the news media. I didn't do no press conference. Because I wanted to hear and I want to do my research. 
Um, so can you put up that information uh, I asked you to? Uh, so we had a, a referendum in 2012, okay? I wasn't in Palm Bay 2012. I didn't know about this referendum, okay? And I didn't vote on this. Palm Bay voted on it. And they voted to um, give the council, they voted to give the council the authority to change how we fill this vacancy by ordinance. Prior to that, it was in the charter. It was in the charter, and it was, and, and now they took it out, and we, we're going to do it by ordinance. It should have stayed in the charter, and we wouldn't be at this place in time right now because I took an oath to follow the Palm Bay Charter. And according to this referendum that over 63% of the voters voted on, gave that authority to the council to decide how a vacancy will be filled. And even in the ordinance that should have been corrected, the will of the people, uh, it's, it's mixed. At the first part, it says, if it's less than a year, you go point. You go point if it's less than a year. You go point to this, you go point a person. The council can appoint a person to the seat right now. The ordinance that we have right now, it says a council can appoint. Is that still taking away your right to vote? The second part of that ordinance, yes, the Please second no part office. of that ordinance, that's a rhetorical question, sir. The second part of that ordinance is you have 90, if it's less, it's more than a year, you have 90 days to 180 days to fill seat five with a special election. So we got two different things with this ordinance. It doesn't make any sense. The charter review was split. I, I know the names on that charter review. Chair was a Democrat and the, and the vice chair was a Republican. And was le heavy lean, leaning Democrat. I disagree with that charter review the way they came out on this referendum that Palm Bay in 2012 voted for. So here's, here's, what, here's the way I see it. If we have a special election, we're going to have a four-person council all the way to the end of the year. We won't get anything, we won't get Palm Bay, we won't get the, the business of Palm Bay done. Then we have a special election with these new laws in the state of Florida that that limit the number of um, early voting and, and, and vote by mail and all of this uh, voter suppression that the state has put on us, they changed the way we vote from 2020. The state. So now it's going to be harder for people to vote. It, you're doing it during a pandemic. The last time in 2020 when we had the early voting at Kogan, we had to shut it down because of the coronavirus. So now, and we're going in the fall, the pandemic's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. I hate to say that, but if you look at what, where we're at with the Delta variants, please, no offers, like that, please. We are, we are putting, we are putting, by having a special election, one, we, we're halting business. We had a, a, uh, a um, BCRA meeting where we, we didn't have the proper number of members on that board. The whole council plus two other members was on that board and one didn't show up. And we had a tie vote on a very important issue. Very important issue. And we had to cancel that and, and reschedule that. That happened. And that can happen again and again if we don't have the proper number of people on this dais. That's why you have seven or five. There's a reason for that. So you don't have these tied votes. You don't have these tied votes. So um, I think what I would like to do is change this ordinance 
then come back and change the charter to reflect the will of the people. If the will of the people want a special election, we need to change the charter, and the charter needs to speak that. I don't have a problem if the charter is changed to that and then take it out of the hands of council. But by changing this ordinance, we are in line with Melbourne. And I don't think Melbourne is, is, is um, taking a citizen rights to vote away. West Melbourne, I don't think they are taking a citizen rights to vote away. Coco, I don't think they have the same, this language fits Coco and Titusville. And they appoint Melbourne, West Melbourne, Coco, Titusville. When there's a vacancy, they appoint a council member. That's not voter suppression. The governor appoints people. The president appoints people. Appointments is not taking your, your constitutional right away. No one is stopping the 2022 election in November and August for Palm Bay. So I respectfully disagree. Um, uh, I'm all for voting rights. I am. I really am. And because I, I served, for the, I served and I uphold the Constitution more times than I could count in different positions in my lifetime. So without due respect, um, I pass my time. Thank you. Um, Deputy Mayor Johnson. Um, thank you, Mayor. I, I second the motion because I want to hear this discussion. And first, I want um, the amount of emails and calls, um, text messages, everything I've received. Um, I want to thank everybody for re reaching out. I love seeing this. We need to see more of this. Mr. Olszewski said it. Uh, Several other people, Mr. Oran said it, Mr. Batten knows it as well. We need to see more people like this all the time. Um, and I tried to get back to as many people as I could. For those that I couldn't, I apologize, um, but I will still get back to you after this meeting. Um, with this, I agree. I agree with a lot of you on the fact that we can get the money for it because we've done change orders for public works. We don't change orders for parks. We've done change orders for slides. We don't change orders for things of that nature. Um, and to me, it's a given that this is the easiest choice, but I also have to take a step back. And that's why I personally, I talked to staff after this came onto the agenda, like, all right, what's going on? And in looking at it from a higher scope, I'm looking and Councilman Foster just said something that reminded me, because I'm, I'm like, okay, we're gonna have four council members for a minimum of three months to possibly six months. A minimum of three months to possibly six months. And he's, he's right. The BCRI meeting almost a month and a half ago that only a few people here were at, which would, which it was, it was a big key item for the city of Palm Bay was a 3-3 vote. And one of the members who you know, was on, on an interview with the mayor earlier this week was not there. And we had to rally up and try to do a special meeting the week after and try to have the vote. And luckily, we were able to have a fourth, um, actually, a 6 1 vote. It was a 6 1 vote. But what I'm saying is, with only four council members, and that's already happened, and there's been several instances, and people can do public records requests, there's several instances where it's been me and the mayor voting one way, or me, the mayor, and uh, Councilman Bailey voting one way. Councilman Felix, Councilman Foster, or me, Councilman Foster, and uh, Mayor Medina, Councilman Bailey, and Councilman Felix voting one way. So it's been 3-2 several times, either way. So you take away one councilman, then that's 2-2. Two -two. And in our ordinances, if it's a 2-2 two -two vote for a lot of these key items, it dies. So that includes construction, that includes businesses, that includes residential development, that includes setback easements when a resident comes before us. That includes a lot, and that's where my concern is. I know we can get the money for it. I agree. I think we can get the money for it. My concern is the part where we hinder ourselves from growth and development in the city of Palm Bay. This has happened before. Hammock Landing should have been Palm Bay. We all know that. It's not, it's, not, it's not news. 
but we all know that. So that's, that's where my main concern is. And I, I just, with that, that's, that's alarming. And it should be alarming for everybody. The only other thing that I also want to address, and I, I want to address it respectfully, is the term unpatriotic and un-American. You know, when we, when we say that, we have to be careful because it can come off wrong. And we're talking about our staff when we're saying they can put a bow tie on it, they can make it a, a nice presentation, things of that nature. That can come off wrong. So we want to be careful with what we say. And unpatriotic, we have what, he's, what he mentioned, West Melbourne, Melbourne, other cities that have this. And if they're watching and listening and they hear this, they can take offense from it. I don't take offense from it but they can take offense from it. So I just want us to be careful with things like that. And more specifically, just recently, that's why it's important, and I'm, I'm saying all this just to educate for those who haven't gone to previous council meetings or who don't pay attention to the state legislator, because over a month ago, Senate Bill 90 was passed. And Senate Bill 90 was passed, it was overwhelming, overwhelmingly passed and signed by our governor, um, who I don't think is unpatriotic, and I don't think he's trying to repress anybody. I, I consider him fiscally responsible, me personally. And y'all know my party, but I feel him fiscally responsible. But the Senate Bill 90, I had to print it out because I was, I was watching it. It repeals the requirement that in the case of an elective office, the required resignation must be filled by election. So I repeat that. It repeals the requirement that in the case of an elective office, the required resignation must be filled by the election. I, I encourage anybody to look this up. The bill also then goes on to state that each municipality shall, by ordinance or charter provision, provide procedures for filling a vacancy in office caused by death, resignation, or removal from office. And lastly, it also states, when not otherwise provided for in this Constitution, the governor shall fill by appointment any vacancy in state or county office for the remainder of the term of appointive office and for the remainder of the term of an elective office if less than 28 months. So I'm saying all that to say, I know, I love Florida. Florida is the best state out of all, 40, all 50 states. And I don't, see, I don't see this as being unpatriotic because if, that, if that's the case, then we're, we're saying all this is unpatriotic. So I just want to say we be careful with our words. And me personally, because I'm just reading the body language, I, I think, and I'm not trying to be come off wrong, but I think an apology is owed to staff because it's their job just to bring possibilities, options. And when we say stuff like that, it can come off wrong, and I've seen it in the past of people on the outside accusing different staff who I know to be upright Yes, we've had corruption in the past, and a lot of those people are gone. Majority of those people are gone. This is new staff. This is new staff right here. This is new staff right here. I'm talking. You had your time. Please, please. So I just, I'm just i providing this information as an educational purpose. That's all I'm saying. And with that, I want to make sure that we, we move accordingly and act accordingly. So that's all, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Bailey or Councilman Felix? Councilman Felix? Councilman Bailey? Yeah, Mayor, go ahead real quick. I know usually you like to, you know, usually the mayor customarily goes last anyways. Um, depends on how passionate they get on an issue. Obviously, you've led on this issue what you think. So we're, we do know that, but I'm sure you have more to say. Um, you know, this is an this is an issue. Let me let me be clear because I did ask questions. There's questions that were asked tonight that I've been asking. Um, you know, where did this come from? Why? There's there's a lot of issues. Never could I've ever envisioned that this is what what this was going to lead that this was going to come before us. Never. Um, matter of fact, I think one person said something like there's four people up here that was doing it. I'm like, it wasn't me. I was not noticed, and our charter officers can you know they can attest. I was not noticed of this until Tuesday before last, that this was a thought. Records requests have shown that evidently all four of us, on this note from the mayor down, were all notified at the same time. That's what the, that's what the email record shows. I know the deputy mayor was having conversations the Friday before, which was immediately after I announced, no, the day at, right, 
in 12 hours, within 12 hours, he was getting correspondence regarding what other municipalities do on these type of issues. Um, so, you know, for me, I, whenever I looked at it, I said, you know, I'm going to step back. I know there's a lot of people reached out to me, and I haven't wanted to say which way I was going to vote on it. Uh, I wanted to hear everybody out. It was it kind of took me, you know, by surprise, to be honest with you. And even in the charter officers, they can tell you that, too. Uh, whenever I heard it, it was, my eyes got a little bit big because, it's, you know, it's certainly... I didn't, I didn't think it was going to cause this much trouble. But in the end, my bottom line is this is not the right time or place. If this was something that should have been handled, we had a Charter Review Commission in 2016. They went line by line through this section of our charter, and you know, they didn't say let's make any changes there. Uh, it's been on our ordinances for some time. There was no other suggestion that this was going to be an issue. Yes, special elections have cost, and that's something that, you know, that, that – that saddens me as being the person up here that's really fought hard and at times been successful in saving money. I've certainly, you know, pushed more than enough items to, to, to save the 250 or 100,000, whatever the estimate ends up being, whatever the cost ends up being for a special election, whether it's the low end or high end. But the bottom line is, in my opinion, and somebody said it earlier, you know, workshopping it. I think my opinion, what should be done from here moving forward is that it should be tasked. We're about to do a charter review commission. So every 10 years, by state law, we, we review it. And 2012 was a regularly scheduled one. So now we're about to do a next one. Next year, you, the, the people will be voting on something for the charter changes. I think that the commission that's put together should be tasked to looking at that provision in the charter. And whatever, whatever we want to put in there, whatever staff or this body, I know I'm not going to be here. I mean, this, this ordinance doesn't do anything to benefit me. No, by the way, I had no interest in trying to push this. But whatever they, whatever they push at that point, it will go to the voters in 2022. That's the bottom line. And then the voters will vote for it. If we want it to look like where we do this more liberal uh, appointment process and give council more authority to appoint, the people will have a chance to vote on it. Or if that commission comes back and the body says, we don't want to appoint at all and we, don't, we always want to have a special election when it's feasible, it could do that too. But the people will get the vote on it in 2022 rather than us deciding quickly. You know, I told charter officers and, and somewhat jokingly, I said, why couldn't they wait till I left? <laughs> You know, because the bottom line is I know that there are some false premises out there thinking that because I have two meetings, I gave two meeting notice, this takes two meetings for a reading, that this somehow, you know, corresponds. they got to get this done before I leave. That's not true. They could do it in the next, no, next month, any time, as long as they don't violate the current ordinance, which allows them 60 to 100, I'm sorry, 90 to 180 days. So the bottom line is... Um, you know, that's not the way I want to go out. It's not the way, you know, I, I certainly don't you know, feel good about you know, having the special election, but I got to do what's right for my family, and that I'm not going to apologize for. And my wife's not going to apologize for, and I know that she has my back, and that's the only thing that's really important to me um, in the world. I mean, I love a lot of you. A lot of you guys are in the audience. You guys, I've known a lot of you guys over the years. A lot of you guys, I mean, I love to death, and I mean, <laughs> quite frankly, I'm going to miss you. And uh, I apologize, Mayor. I'm just kind of dealing with the emotions of, look, I'm leaving the city I love. I really do love it. Um, there's things with my family. We want to live a more rural lifestyle that makes it more difficult um, to do that here and accomplish some of our other fam family goals. And so then with the, and the whole process of moving and so forth, so forgive me, I am a little bit emotional about this. I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave with, with, a, with a brawl. This is not how I want it, but I can't support this tonight. But in the end, you know, either there's three, vo three votes that are remaining or not. Let me address real quick uh, this idea of a two-to-two -two vote, though. Look, let me be frank. If you can't get three votes out of the four, it probably shouldn't pass. It. That's the Bailey's pit. Yeah. <laughs> but, but if you know me, that's just a little bit of my position, how I see things. And I don't see things how everybody else does all the time. But um, anyhow, that's just kind of my point on that. But, but I, don't, I don't think, I, I know it's constitutional. I went over it with our attorneys. Oh, the other thing I wanted to put for the record, and I, I actually I should have asked it earlier, but um, there is no general election in Palm Bay in 2000, uh, 2021. There is none. So that provision, about 90 to 180 days, and, and relating that to the general election that's happening in other municipalities is irrelevant to Palm Bay. Palm Bay has none. Um, so I just want to make sure that's clear because, you know, my, there, is, there was nothing sneaky about the timing. The timing was based on when my, my family, we had to make a decision on, on the job and, and commit to it. And, and so it was very difficult and it led up to it, but I wanted to give at least some time. And thankfully I did because it allowed me at least be a little bit part of this conversation, even though it's not necessarily the way I want to go out, uh, with, like I said, with the hurrah, but uh, around this issue, I'd rather go out a little bit more peaceful. I think most people do. You know, just, you know, I felt like things were um, in a different place when I started this position. 
and you know I've, I've just fought to try to reset some of the pieces. There were certainly some decisions that were made that weren't the right decisions that I think Kurt caused some turmoil. And, and I was here. And my my goal for the last six six and a half years has been how can I how can I help Palm Bay move forward? And that's that's what I've dedicated my life to. And I'm just and I'm just hoping. And my family knows what time I've put into it. A lot of you guys know that too, actually. But um, the bottom line is that you know I'm just hoping that council you know considers that. I know we've heard from four out of, uh, out of five essentially at this point. Um, so it's a lot of pressure on Councilman Foster right now. I'm sorry, Councilman Felix right now. But I'm sure he's going to be thoughtful with it. I know he's a man of God too, and, and, and think everything through. And and I, I just appreciate I appreciate everybody up here. So we um, hope we can move forward and just let the people vote next year. Thank you, Councilman Bailey. Uh, I first I'd like to start off with uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for being so passionate about your right to vote. I want to thank each and every one of you that called me to tell me that you knew that I wouldn't support an ordinance that would change midstream when someone resigns. We have an ordinance today. And I also want to share, there was no press release. There was no press conference. What occurred was a contact from the news contacted me to make a comment. They knew I was passionate about it. I'd also like to address a comment regarding the statement in the newspaper. They contacted me because they knew I had responded to so many emails that I received from our constituency. From all the Palm Bayers, I responded to each and every one until I walked through those doors, letting them know how I felt about this proposed ordinance when there is an existing ordinance that says over a year special election. That's how I read it. That's how I received it. And my comments about being unpatriotic, un-American, with all due respect to each and every one of you, they still stand. When I say when I say you could gift wrap it, put a bow tie on it, put a bow on it, I mean it. The bottom line is, it affects the individual's vote. And I will, I will never, ever compromise that in my lifetime. Regardless, regardless, I wrap myself around the right to vote. Many nations, many nations throughout the globe look at us as a beacon of hope because we have the right to vote. And I make no excuses, but I also say with all due respect, this is how I was raised. My father came to this nation as an immigrant, as a man that came out of an orphanage with one skill, became a business owner, and provided for his family. And the proudest moment on his face was when I earned my EGA, the Eagle Globe and Anchor. And he always said to me, we always in this nation have the right to vote and it does make a difference. I wouldn't even fathom to think of removing whether it's for two months, three months, a year, to take that power away from you. This has nothing to do with anything but the right to vote. That's the bottom line. And I stand with my comments, and I stand unashamed. 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 I bleed red, white, and blue. I, 
I am unapologetic of that fact. I understand that my words may harm someone, may wound someone. And if that is the case, please understand that that is not my intent. My intent is to demonstrate the passion that I have for this nation, for this flag. That is my passion. So we have a motion Councilman Felix. Thank you so much, Mayor. Um, let me first say, it's truly, it is a privilege. It's an honor for me to sit here to serve you. I think the question tonight is, it's about the right to vote. I paid attention for, to every single member of this body. I think we all would agree that no one is trying to take your right to vote away and take it from someone, I was not born in the States. I came here, I'm from a country that it was a luxury. You know, you put your life in, 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 in line should you choose to go vote. So I understand the importance of that, and I certainly would not wanna take that away from no one. And I paid attention to every single one of you, and the comments were made about not paying attention, not looking at, I, I paid attention, close attention to every single thing that was said. And I'll be honest, I came here with my mind set. And I, I took back with, by the, some of the comments that was made and, and I really, and they touched me. Um, I think part of the question is the, the I think Councilman Bay, uh, Foster mentioned earlier we, we had a little bit of a problem with the way the language is currently in the ordinance. Most of comments were made in, in regards of the time frame, the 90 days. So chances are we're not gonna have a full body for four months based on the report we are getting from the supervisor of election. We may not have an election until the end of the year. What do we do in the meantime? That, that just, I'm just pausing, asking questions. What do we do in the meantime with a body of four people. Um, I know by no means the money should be an issue, and I totally agree. But again, it's just the way the, 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 the ordinance is currently, uh, uh, the language, cause a problem that I think we should, to some extent, discuss it before we call a vote. Because I'd like to understand what takes place from the time, from the 5th, August 5th, till when we can actually, should we go that route, what takes place? That's just a question. I think that's worth taking in consideration as we, I know there's a member here from the BCRA, it happens before, we have no tiebreaker. Do we appoint somebody for four months, there's no such language until that election. I think it's worth that we should have a discussion before we quickly take, take a vote. But I want it to be clear, in fact, I want to acknowledge my wife's presence. This thing's so hot, she was watching at home, now she's in the, 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 the watching me, her eyes are right on me. I'm like, man, she's texting me the whole time, I'm calling me, what are you gonna do? Do the right thing. <laughs> Do the Jesus thing, and, and I agree, she's here. Um, and, and like I said again, it's truly a privilege for somebody that, again, for Palm Bay elected me, and I, I believe to some extent 29,000 voters entrusted their, you know, their vote in, in me. I don't take that very lightly. I'm truly having a hard time here. I'll, I'll, this is not about, you know, by any means, I understand and I respect your right. Um, I think we should discuss that, that portion of it. We want to be clear on that. Maybe staff can help us, city attorney. Um, so, Madam Attorney, uh, Madam Smith, would you want to address that? I, I kind of love what uh, 
Councilman Bailey said, you know, three to one is, is where the project's at. It's, go, it's just going to be responsibility on the four of us to move forward and really study the issues on them, uh, especially when it comes to commercial. Uh, that was mentioned. I believe that we're all here on, on a commercial uh, agenda, increasing commercial base, uh, Councilman Felix. And then uh, Deputy Mayor Johnson mentioned something that really, really touched my heart was Hammock Landing. Hammock Landing, it, it was in that era, there was a, a opportunity for that to belong to the city of Palm Bay. And the, the difference is the ideology is different. The leaders of that, of yesteryear, wanted Palm Bay to remain a bedroom community. This, uh, folks, uh, the folks here have demonstrated and stated time and time again that we want to be uh, more into a, a higher commercial base. But uh, Madam Smith, Councilman Felix had uh, a concern and, and he wanted to see if you can answer that. Yes, Mayor. Once the resignation is effective, we would give notice to the supervisor of election. The statute allows the supervisor of election to actually set the date. It's only with the consent of the supervisor of election. So we let her know, but we don't have the authority to dictate to her when this election is going to be held. Does that help you, Councilman Felix? Yes. Uh, but in the meantime, according to the language, so the, it would be a body of four until if it takes four or six months, up to six months, which, which is the maximum, the body would be four members. Is that correct? Under the current ordinance, yes. Well, as far as the current vacancy ordinance, yes. Mayor, can I ask a question? Councilman Foster? Um, this is for the city attorney. Um, how that would affect when it comes to uh, variance, uh, development, uh, commercial, or going forth, and, the, and them issues coming before council with a body of four? How would that affect? What would that do to the business in Palm Bay getting that done? As far as the legal effect of a tie vote, when you have those land uses, uh, if it's a tie vote, it fails. And under our current code of ordinances, the same or similar issue wouldn't be able to be brought back for another year. Another year. Um, so, and the reason why I wanted her to answer that question, because that's where I'm at. That's where I made my decision at. Not to take away anybody's right to vote, I, I was elected to do the business of Palm Bay and to represent you, and I'm trying to do it the best way I can. So that's, that's why I disagree with you. I'm not, not, I agree with you, you should have the right to vote. I'm all for voting rights. I've been pushing that ever since I ran, since 2016, people to go out and vote. I do that all the time. So I'm not for um, taking anybody's rights away, but we, you're going to vote on Jeff Bailey's seat. I don't have a choice in that. I don't want to make that decision on your, on your vote in 2022. I want you to go out and vote. I want people to vote for this seat. I, I voted for this seat. Um, so I, I, we, have a, we have a situation here where uh, it can stymie the business in Palm Bay and cost us money in the long run. Uh, more than that $250,000, that's the way I see it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Felix, did you have additional questions of the attorney? No, Mayor. Okay. Council, Deputy Mayor Johnson, Councilman Bailey. Yeah, just real quick. Um, one thing I have been working on, if there is any marginal difference I, I, between the dead timelines um, of when the election comes out, I think part of our code says we give 60 days notice to supervisor election. Of course, we've already, you know, up, you know they, they are aware. 
But our charter says it won't be until 90 days out. If that 90 days, if it in any way would reduce the cost by changing the 90 days to, say, 75 days for the lower end, and that allows them to do it concurrently with not our city, we don't have a general election, but others do, that I'd be okay with. And if that, and I don't think it's going to save us that much money, but if it saves us a few thousand, then that, I'm fine with that, and I think that would be a reasonable compromise. I do think there's also some other changes in here that I'd like to hear a little bit more from staff that they've said is you no know, kind of like statutorily required, we're preempted by the state. So there's other little provisions we need to change, but we've had some concerns through public comment tonight about, for instance, one, um, if we go to the state statutes and it's saying that there's a, a later deadline for a candidate to file and ours is earlier, is that something we have to do or is that something we're preempted or we're just allowed to do? It's not everything we're allowed to do, we should do. Sir, there, I'm not sure what that relates to. I don't know that there's anything in here related to that. The changes that I uh, put forth aren't related to the vacancies. The only changes that I put forth are related, are the other parts of the ordinance. And it's because many of them were outdated. They have responsibilities that are clearly, that say our clerk does, that are clearly in the statute that says that the supervisor of elections um, takes care of those. And, and what I drafted and presented to the uh, clerk, I, on each one of those, cited what the statute was, what the charter was, what the constitutional provision was. And even in, in her adopt, when she uh, drafted the uh, ordinance, she's put those uh, particular uh, statutes or constitutional provisions or the charter provision. But there is nothing in here in the other ordinances where there was a choice amongst other options in which we just chose one. The only part of this ordinance in which there is essentially a choice among options is, is really the vacancy. You can leave the vacancy as it is, it's legal. You can change it, it's legal. But the other items are things that are do conflict with law, and that council should change. They either conflict with state law or they conflict with our charter. Let, let me get let me let me follow up real quick, Mayor. So let me go specific. I think I found what because I think a couple speakers spoke on. I think what they were speaking to. Go to section fifty point zero eight, please, and subsection A. And what you do have written over there, under there, it says um, section 101.75 floor statutes delegates authority to the city to move the date and qualifying period. So I think that's what they were speaking to is qualifying period of any municipal election to a date concurrent with other state and countywide elections. So if I'm reading that correctly, Ms. Smith, that's saying that we can make it that way. Statute says we can do it where it lines up with county and statewide what I'm hearing from people concerned from the public is that that's actually going to shorten our window, that our window is actually a little bit wider to allow candidates in compared to state or countywide elections. Are you familiar with that? That was not a proposed change of mine, so I would uh, defer to the clerk. Okay, yeah, I'll let her answer. I did pull that directly from the Florida statutes um, because what we have in there did conflict um, so I'm, I'm not sure exactly what your question is. Well, the way I read it, and there's Section A there, it says primary, and so originally it read, no person may qualify as a candidate in accordance with Section point five zero five fifty ten prior to the 78th day pre uh, preceding the next municipal election, nor later than 5 o'clock local time on the 74th day. So that's our, our qualifying. That's, I mean, of course, this is not going to affect our pre-qualifying, correct? So pre-qualifying, when, when is somebody allowed to say they're going to announce they're going to run for a seat? They can do that at any time. And they can get your paperwork and they'll file it in, in, with you as election official for the city, correct? Correct. So the only thing in there is you're saying that that week, usually it's a you know, qualifying week, it's usually, there's, it says 78th day and 74th day, there's usually about five business days where, where we actually qualify when we run for office. We, we announce, we pre-qualify, we have our campaign, um, bank account set up or we're doing our reports, but you're not truly qualified until you get to that qualifying week, which is closer to the election. You're saying that we're changing that to what the state says, and you're saying that the state has preempted it? 
No, I, I typically, well, what I have done since we now have primary elections, the qualifying date has now moved to, uh, for example, to June. So I follow the qualifying dates of the um, state, which is noon on Monday to noon on Friday. Okay, is this going to is this going to change the time period at which somebody can qualify? How long they can? That's what makes sure before we pass something like this. This is another reason why I think it needs to be maybe maybe just you know, the table it, regardless of where council goes, even tabling and relooking at that section, a couple of these sections to say, you know, are there other options and allow us to explore? It's kind of awkward doing it from the dais tonight, but um, unless you guys have easy answers for that, I mean, if we didn't if we didn't delegate, it says it delegates authority to the city to move the date and qualifying period. Again, that's for the primary and general elections only. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm speaking to. We're, yeah. we're talking about regular general operations for elections is what I'm you know, was speaking to. All right, anyhow, that one, that one just has a little, I mean, it gives me a little bit of setback. The other, like I said, the other question that I posed to our uh, charter officers um, this afternoon is maybe if we change it to 75 days and if that allows any type of small uh, cost savings. And also that would limit what Councilman Felix was saying as far as the time period that we have for votes. I mean, it's, to me, it's not a big issue, but just to me, you know, for those who it is, that also address that because if she has the ability to do it in November, that's a month sooner than December. Councilman, or Deputy Mayor Johnson? Yes, Mayor. Um, I, I hear what Councilman Felix, <clears throat> I hear what Councilman Felix is saying, and part of being on this dais is trying to find commonality, trying to find a, a place of balance. Um, and I, was, I was just asking Miss Patricia Smith, because I, I may have found it, I may have not, but what if, and I'll, I'll ask this so she can answer it to the public, um, can I make a motion on this ordinance in a way where we appoint somebody temporarily until the special election? That is certainly, this is first reading, and that would actually be the language that was in the charter before the amendment. Under the um, language before the uh, charter, uh, the approved referendum, in a situation like this where it's uh, more than six months, council would appoint um, a, a person that would serve until the special election. That was the prior language. And certainly, at its first reading, council is free to make any changes. It can vote on the current language. It can Deny the language, they can make um, changes. It's completely up to council at this point. So, so just so I, I understand, Deputy Mayor Johnson, what you're asking and what I think that I heard the city attorney say is uh, appoint someone from the day that Councilman Bailey is no longer on council until the special election whenever that is is that what your intent is that's 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 my intent because like i said the the cost i, I truly believe in yeah we're in the budget process but we're, we're working on that as mr Olszewski said but we we can't just have a vacancy when we're trying to conduct city business and that's my issue so i'm trying to find a way where it addresses both sides where we have the special election, but we also don't just leave a vacant seat on key votes. So that's, that's, what I'm, that's really what I'm trying to work on right here. And I, I, and I get what you're saying, and I, I appreciate you, know, you, you looking for that ground. Um, the, the point is, I think we could still manage with four, with four votes, uh, three to one. You mentioned variances. You mentioned commercial issues. Um, I think we could, you know, it could go three to three to one most of the time uh, when there's no disagreement. Uh, commercially, I think we've been working pretty well together as well. Um, but that, that's for you, you seconded that motion, so that that's something that procedurally you would have to withdraw that motion and then amend if I'm if I'm not mistaken well, I was just throwing the conversation out there oh, that's all. yeah um, I I was thinking uh, along that same lines that uh, the deputy mayor was uh, mayor um, because it really comes out to the same 
if we don't have a special election, we appoint somebody and then when the general election comes around, then the person get elected and that point, appointed person might not even run or, or lose, whatever. I don't know who if that person can be, but if we shorten that temporary appointment to give the uh, citizen uh, to put the person that they want in a special election, um, and I'm okay with that. I, I will withdraw my motion and go with that, what the deputy mayor proposed. Um, um, to me, it's just shorten the, the situation, what we're in now. But um, that's just a thought, so I want to throw that out there. Councilman Fields. Mayor, thank, thank you, Mayor. I, I think it, it's, it's a good point. Like I said, it, it, this, this is definitely a sticking point for me. Having going um, with the vacancy well over four months, potentially it could be longer. Um, I would be, I think that's, a, it may, may not solve it, but I think the citizen get what's they what they're asking for. That wouldn't change the that fact. We just don't do not go without that that uh, vacancy for four, potentially four months. The well, citizen get their 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 wishes. We all you know, and and we we get, we fill that position. That pretty much that I think that would solve the uh, what the uh, deputy mayor is proposing. That would pretend, uh, solve solve the, the issue we're facing tonight. So just just so that I I understand you you would be if you if you go with that I am reminded of a situation that came up um, with the United States Senate recently in Florida and Senator Lemieux was appointed as senator prior to the election but he promised that he wouldn't run for re-election sitting on that, on, on that, at that Senate seat. So seeing that the council may want to go that way, um, perhaps uh, you could make it a requirement, whoever you, you temporarily put in there, that they, there's no intention for them to run again or in that, in that special election. Mayor, what, what difference would it make if that person so choose to run. I mean, can we? Yeah, I, we, I, I don't hear think you. We can. I, I'm just saying what happened in the Senate. I, I'm just <laughs> That's saying fair. what happened in the Senate. Right. Yeah, yeah. What, I'm, yeah. Saying, I'm, I'm using that as an example. Got, got it. But um, it, I, I truly believe today that we can operate with four council people. Yes. I really believe that. Yes. I really believe. I, I I truly believe that we can do this um, until the special election. I, I wholeheartedly believe that we can um, strap up and, and work together. You know, I, as a council, I know that we were all elected on transparency, accountability throughout our campaigns. That's what we echoed. And I, and I have echoed collaboration. We have worked well as a team. And I believe we can continue to work as a team. I don't want to be known as the council that took away that ability to work as a team, to work and decide to not have a special election. I would rather be known as the council that really took on the mantle of changing our reputation, changing the course that we've, uh, whether it's right or wrong, gentlemen, the perceptions out there the perception of things that have happened in the past. I would prefer us to have the impeccable reputation as the three of us came up on council. Uh, and of course, uh, our senior members here, meaning, and I know that you're not a senior Deputy Mayor Johnson, uh, but, but I think you, you understand my point. Um, I know that we could work together. I know that we could work in, in sync when there's four members on council. And th those are my comments. I'd rather be known as the council that really took on the mantle of leading by example and 
turning away from the perception, even though it may not be happening, but the perception that something is being done wrong. And, and that's important to me. This is voter integrity. This is our integrity. And, and that perception is important. So those, those are my thoughts. Mayor, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to provide a solution for all. That's really what it's about. Because um, like, like you said, me and Councilman Bailey have been here. And it can, and I, I don't want it to happen, but it's definitely a strong possibility. Because like the one project, if it was up to that, we'd have lost. And that's a big commercial project that we would have missed out on if it was a situation what we're talking about. So I'm just trying to find a way to address both sides, address Yes, we're going to have the special election, but yes, in the meantime, we'll have a five-person council for those decisions. And I agree. I, I would prefer somebody, and I talk, I talk to somebody in the audience. He sees me looking at him. I'm not going to call him out. But I would prefer somebody who I know is not going to run for re -election, for election because I know they're going to be focused for however long, three months, four months, on the duties of the city and what it takes. You're going to be split when you're trying to do campaigning and um, learning how to operate the city, but this gentleman definitely knows the city in and out, and I know his intentions, and he wouldn't just try to um, run for re-election, and his wife wouldn't let him either, so. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not even gonna look at him anymore, but um, so I'm, I'm really just trying to find middle ground on addressing everything, and that's, and that's all I'm at, so I'll, I'll stop. Yeah, and I, I understand. I remember that vote, and, and it came back, uh, and it was unanimous after people s settled in, and, or I think it was unanimous, it was 6-1, after people settled in, and, and it was just the, the opportunity to get weeds into the weeds a little more, I, I think, uh, because several of us, uh, we, we re-looked at it in a refreshed state of mind, and that goes right to my point. I think we could work in that same sequence, in that same sync. We work together. We realize, wait a minute, this is the opportunity. All right, you're right. 6-1 is how it went down. But um, I hear what your point. Councilman uh, Bailey? Yeah, real quick, let's keep in mind, that was a 3-3 vote. It was not a vote where you're not going to be able to re-vote in a year. That was, you know, there's, there are some votes that were mentioned earlier. There are situations where if something fails, it cannot be brought up for a year, like an ordinance change, okay? Nothing, nothing that's substantially the same. But in that case, it was more of a policy decision that was able to be revisited real quickly. So it's not always going to be an issue. And it was a good thing because after the 3-3 vote, I was able to ask the one person for another $100,000 and they said yes that time. They did not say yes the first time, but they said yes the second time. So that was $100,000 more going into taxpayers' coffers right there. Um, so it's not always a bad thing. And just keep in mind, that, okay, if, if you guys are smart enough, you, you guys should, should be, you know, you guys are green. Some of us are green, but you guys are smart enough that if it's, somebody's made a motion for something, like an ordinance, and it can't be re revisited for a year, and you're having debate, Okay, and you see it's 2-2, two, two, you would draw it and table it. That way you can re, you know, do it in a sooner time period. And if it's not, and, it, and, if, and let's, say, let's say if there's two council members that got aggressive and said, let's kill this project, but there was two that was for it. Well, if those two people who say kill it, right, who say let's not do this, their motion dies, that doesn't, ref, uh, that doesn't reflect on whether that thing can come back because there's a motion to deny, not a motion to approve. And I mean, I'll let Ms. Smith double check me on that, but that was just my quick reasoning of that. Is that correct, Ms. Smith? Not on the current ordinance, but it's an ordinance. Just like this ordinance can be changed, certainly if that was council intent while you're all dealing with um, having an even number of uh, people, that's, the ordinance could be changed to that so long as a majority agreed to that. But no, that would not be my interpretation of the current ordinance. Okay. So you're saying, so if there was motion to deny a request and it, and it failed, nobody can make a motion to approve that request? No, what I'm saying is if the motion, if the act isn't approved, whether it's because nobody votes to approve it or it's tied, it fails. I, I don't see it as there is this uncertainty.
denied, nobody takes it up, nobody does anything else, so it's in certain uh, a limbo where it's neither approved nor denied. It's either approved, denied, or withdrawn. Okay, so if that's the case, I guess what that means is that two council members really want to kill something, kill it and, and let it kill. But that's just an option. The bottom line is, like I said earlier, if you can't get, I mean, really I shouldn't even got this much into minutia. If you can't get three votes, it should die anyways, if you guys can't figure out how to pre preserve it. Well, um, Councilman Foster, it's, it's not only just commercial. We're getting ready to start our budget process. Get ready to start our budget process. We've got to make a very important decision for the coming year budget. And I like to have more um, brains than I got um, helping me making that decision on the budget. And then we got the American Care Act. We got $18 million that we have to use in a certain way. Uh, we need all hands on deck to make these decisions. So um, that's why I believe we need five people. I don't want to get into a 2-2 two -two tie and, and, and stymie the business of the city. Um, you know, we're here to do the job to get business done, and this could affect us financially by not having a, a fifth person on the city. So the deputy mayor came up with a compromise. I can live with that, a, a, a temporary appointment until we have a special election, and once that person is elected, that whoever that may be, that temporary person leaves the, the dais. Um, uh, the will of the people has um, was uh, uh, performed. So that's all I have to say, Mayor. Um, well, I, I know that the American Care Act, we, we've got years to, to make a determination on that. And then I believe our workshop already kind of like set the rate. So um, when, when it comes to the budget process, so I think that that's all been put into place. And, and uh, even according to those briefings, we, we already gave that direction of, of what the millage rate would be. And it was 755. I'm not sure of the the amount, so I, I don't I don't think that argument holds any water. Um, I, I still believe that we can work together, but that's that's where I stand. I still believe that this, however you 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 cut it, however you package it, it's still the bottom line taking away the right of the people to vote. So and, and that's that's where I'm at. So how is it taking away the right for them to vote when they will still vote? They will vote in the special election. Yes, that's what I'm they, saying. They won't be able, we won't have the authority to appoint someone. But they will still vote because there will still be a special election. That's what but I'm saying. But we're going to pick someone to sit on this dais. That's, that's where I'm going. We shouldn't have that authority to pick anyone to sit well, on this some, dais. Someone's Ma mayor. Someone's voting. That's what I'm Mayor, someone with, someone's voting who did, was not elected. I think that's the point. Someone's voting and making decisions for the city on policy that was not elected. I think. Well, and that, I, that's where I'm at, um, Deputy I, Mayor Johnson. It's 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 the fact. I have a really bad issue with me making a decision to bring someone on on this dais when each and every one of us went through a year plus interview process with the people. And so that's, Mayor, that's where my if I, if I may, um, uh, speak, yes, sir. Speak. Uh, that's where I'm at, uh, Deputy Mayor Johnson, since you, you asked me. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Deputy I, Mayor, or uh, <laughs> Councilman. And it's getting late. Uh, well, we, we, to, to, the, to that point, what you said is the, currently, the language currently, the, um, Councilman Bailey resigned after November. The current language give us, the current ordinance give us the right to appoint. November. Yes, sir. After November, yes, so would we not do that and and change the ordinance then? Well, I'm just pause. Yeah, you know, I'm just asking the you, question. That's an excellent the point. Yeah, right. That's an excellent point. Would but we, here's here's the difference. Got it. We have a current ordinance that says over a year, this is what you do. Oh, well, I'm willing to honor it. It's not the and question, then, but that's what the, the filling the gap in between. Yeah, I'm I, not I sure why we so opposed to it. Whether it's six months three months and I understand the ordinance, I still have a problem with picking someone to sit on this diet. Now, the way the ordinance reads today, 
is if it's an over a year, right? What happens? It's a special election. So what are we doing? We're tampering with the ordinance, right? That's what we're doing. We're changing the, the existing ordinance so that it confines so that we can appoint someone. And that's where I'm at. Price definitely was a factor as well. That, that's part of uh, on staff. As far as staff is concerned, price, the cost, was, was a factor. So we, let's not necessarily put that aside. We agree the, the, the price is much bigger than the dollar amount. I, I, we, we all agree with that. But uh, price was a factor. I believe that's what dro drove, drove us here. Can I, Mayor, can I say one last thing? Yes, no, Councilman no, Foster. I'm going to stop oh, talking after this. Um, the current ordinance allows us to point if this was less than a year. The current ordinance. Excuse me. Please, no offers. Please. Once again, I didn't talk when you was talking. I listened. Please give me that same respect. The current ordinance, if it was less than a year, we can appoint. Let me say that again. The current ordinance, if he was leaving in November, in December, we could appoint for his seat. Would that be voter oppression? Because that's what the ordinance says right now. What I'm suggesting is the compromise that the deputy mayor came up. Well, you can fill that vacancy for that short period of time and still get your special election. Um, and we keep the business of Palm Bay moving forward. Um, but to me, all of this is kind of mute because Councilman Bailey could pull his verbal resignation anytime he wants. Things might change tomorrow for him. He hasn't officially resigned. He hasn't did it in writing. And he has the right to pull it up until the last day. He said, he said verbally he's going to leave. So if situation changed tomorrow, we wouldn't be, we still need to change the ordinance. I believe we need to change the charter to reflect the will of the people. On, on um, November 2012, the will of the people vote, 60% of the people voted to give that um, duty to the council to chose how their vacancy is going to be filled. And they came up with this ordinance. And it, and it has two sides to it. It says you can appoint less than a year, or if it's more than a year, you have a special election. This, please, please. I suggest, like y'all talking about voter suppression, to get rid of that whole ordinance. And when the charter review come up, just have a special election. Okay? I'm fine with it. When it's in the charter, and it, we don't have the, the council, don't have to make that decision because we'll follow the charter. So I think the compromise is a, is a is a good idea, and um, if y'all willing to do that, I'm willing to move my motion. If not, let's call the question. So the councilman Bailey, go ahead. Sorry, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to add to the discussion. I know we had our county commissioner who was who was actually sitting up here whenever this went out to the ballot. And, and I wish I would have asked her at the time. I didn't think about it. But with what you just, what Mr. Foster just said, Mayor, what I did notice in the documents that I received from the clerk, and I believe that most of what I've asked for got to everybody else too. Uh, I think it was shared with everybody. When, um, uh, the history, right? And so when you look at that history, there was actually an ordinance being drafted up. This ordinance was drafted as the charter change was going through. So we have our charter and our ordinances. Charter was changed. There, the charter commission based on staff recommendation at the time, was saying strike these things out, state law allows us to do it through ordinance. So they did that, but they had to have the ordinance ready. This is the ordinance. And so I can only imagine, I wasn't here then, and I wasn't on the Charter Review Commission or City Council then, and have no clue what happened. But I imagine people, they said, look, there's still going to be a process, and it's this ordinance. This is just the first time we've got to use this ordinance, right, in, you know, in the last you know, nine years. So, that, so I guess what I'm saying is that, that that passed, but they had this as the backup. And so what we're seeing is that there's a central debate if we were to deviate from what they put together. And that's why I'm suggesting putting it for next year anything that's substantial as 
taking no substantial as giving council the uh, expanding council's authority. I mean, other things that are more you know uh, ministerial in nature, I think is okay. And you no, know, you know, getting in line with the state with the state statutes because they overrule us anyways. That's a, that's not a problem. But as far as doing something this serious, I think it would. I think it's going to take more to debate than just tonight. Council, enough. Uh, are you going to remove Mayor? Uh, yeah, I would like to remove yeah. my motion. I mean, my uh, second. Okay. So we have. If uh, Councilman Foster will remove it second, I mean first. Well, you already removed yeah, yeah. your second. Yeah. You removed your second. So the the motion, the way it stands, doesn't have a second. Is there anyone that's going to second that motion? Motion fails. Motion yeah. fails. Mayor, I would like to make a, I would like to make a motion um, to the previous language prior to the charter amendment with um, uh, temporary appointee up until a special election. I got a motion by Deputy Mayor Johnson, seconded by. Uh, Councilman Foster, any additional discussion? Councilman Bailey. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I uh, mean, I, I can't be in support of it, obviously, but the but but there is an ask that I made that is not you know an interest for me or politics. It's just simply for taxpayers. If we change that window from 90 days to 75 days, we can't tell the supervisor election when she's going to hold our election. If she chooses to hold it with the other general elections in other places, and that saves a little bit of money, a little bit of house support, great. But we can't determine that. But what I want to do is not allow our ordinance to interfere with her having that option. So, so if we, we strike the 90 and make it 75, she would have a window that if she so chooses and she's prepared, the supervisor election can have it on November 2nd with the other elections that might be occurring in the county. Is that, is that confirmed, Ms. Jones? Ninety to seventy-five. Is that confirmed? <laughs> I would have to um, look into that. But is that something small enough that um, it can be amended in the second? Yeah, I, I just would like Your to time frame. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm a little conservative on that. So more likely than not, if you all voted for it and it was ninety now, and then you came back to second reading and you wanted to change it, I'd probably tell you you'd have another reading. Okay. All right, then um, then I'll uh, well, I'll amend my motion from ninety to, uh, to seventy-five days, be included. Is is there a second? Second. Okay, so I've got a motion uh, with that motion, or uh, a second with that motion, uh, amending it from ninety to seventy-five days to to flow. Um, Councilman Austin. Did you want to add something, or Councilman? No, I, it's a new motion. I, yeah, I, I second it. I just want to say, you know, that 75 days starts when Councilman Bailey leaves. So we don't know when he's going to leave until he, he surrendered his resignation. So I just want to say that. Yeah, I'm, I'm OK with that. And I just want to clarify, so instead of 90 to 180-day window to hold a special election, it'll be 75 to 180, and we'll see how that fits in with the supervisor election, give her time to process that, um, because that might allow us to have it on November 2nd, that being the intended purpose, if that saves any money. Okay, I got a motion by Deputy Mayor Johnson, seconded by Councilman Foster. Any further discussion? Oh, do you need anything, ma'am? Madam Attorney? Yes, if we can note, I know we, uh, we are stating, and the clerk and I are just trying to make sure that we understand the uh, motion. So the only thing that, are we only changing the removal of the filling of the vacancy? Are we doing everything else as um, in the ordinance and making these additional changes? I, we're not quite sure what. Yeah. What you guys have voted on, and want to make sure we understand. Okay, so let me Thank make you. it clear. I'll repeat. I'll repeat myself. So, only thing I'm doing: keep the special election, 
change it from 90 to 180 days to 75 and 180 days. And just within the amount of time of the special election, we have an appointee to just hold down the fort. Well, we're still having the special election, so that's the right to vote. And yeah, so yeah, man, it's, it's, it's not about getting yeah, along. We, it's about governing efficiently. Yes, we sir. we can't we can't entertain any outbursts. You know, I really appreciate your passion, folks. I truly do. But at this point in time, this is council's discussion, so please act accordingly. Carry on, Deputy Mayor. That's all, Mayor. That's you were in midstream. Well, um, Ms. Patricia, did you get everything I was saying? Or Ms. Smith? Yes. So we're good with the most. Okay. All right. I, I still can't support this motion. I do appreciate you guys working it through. But to me, and my stance and my comments still stand. Um, I'll, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Johnson? Aye. Councilman Bailey? Nay. Councilman Foster? Aye. Councilman Felix? Aye. Mayor Medina? Nay. This passes 3 2.